Good evening. My name is Gamalia Latour. I'm a prophetic leader with Brockton Interfaith Community. Brockton Interfaith Community is a multi faith, multi ethnic nonprofit organization promoting racial and economic justice through prophetic, faith rooted community organizing. We advocate on the state level as MCAN and at the national level as Faith in Action. By building power, locally through intentional relationships. We aspire to create systems and structures for the purpose of establishing a more equitable and just world. For the past year, following a process of deep listening to, with the hopes, to the hopes and needs of members of, the, of our community, BIC has been focusing energy and resources on education funding reform. I'm a Brockton resident a member of Restoration Community Church, a husband, a father of three children, one of whom attends Brockton Public Schools. This is the reason why I'm here. This is the reason we're all here. Because the state is dragging its feet when it comes to funding our children's education. We have called this press conference today because the state has already been presented with three bill proposals addressing education funding and instead of acting in the best interest of our children, they are taking their time. They are, walk they are waiting on yet another bill, a bill that is projected to address only four concerns when there are many, many more. A bill that has yet to be released, that is taking more and more time, time that our children do not have. Education, growth, development, graduation, college and, and career readiness, societal progress, and development in an ever-changing and expanding world do not sit on hold while the state takes its time, year after year, to address an old, long-standing issue, weakening our children, our communities, chances at success. No longer will our children sit by as the world evolves and they stay in crowded classrooms with outdated, falling apart textbooks. No longer as parents will we stand by the wayside while the people on Beacon Hill bicker back and forth over our children's future resulting in inaction. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote in his book, Why We Can't Wait. And I quote, time itself is neutral. It can be used either destructively or effectively. More and more I feel that the people of ill will have used time much more effectively than have the people of good will. We will have to repent in this generation not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. We must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always ripe to do right. Massachusetts State Legislature, we assert that as good people of goodwill, you have not used time effectively. We must repent for a generation of children sacrificed to this ineffective use of time. We demand that it's time to use time creatively, that the time is ripe to do right. Good evening, everybody. Hello, my name is Minister Jonathan Stroud, and I am a son of the city of Brockton. I have lived here all my life, and I actually started my education here at the Shaw School in 1993. I maneuvered my way through the educational system from K to ninth grade, and I graduated from Massasoit Community College. I'm a member of Restoration Community Church here in the great city of Brockton, and part of our mission is to transform lives. I'm affiliated with BIC through the common goal and a mission of fighting for the reform of public education for our children, our economy, and our communities, and our future. BIC is a multi-faith organization, and I come from the perspective of a believer of Christ, but I hope that regardless of what tradition people come from, I hope that you can also find meaning in the words I share today. So today, we're going to be coming from the title, We Can Do Better. 
So we're going to be coming from Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 through 2 and 6 through 8. And it reads, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, and he placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son Abraham replied. The fire and wood I hear, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So as we begin, uh, about last week I sat in my brother's barber chair. He's a barber. And he was explaining to me how he refuses to have his children in our public education system. And I was just looking at him and he's just like, John, would you want your children in this system? And I had to think about that for a second. He was explaining to me just like how our system isn't the way it should be. And even last week, a visiting pastor was speaking about our educational system. It was just, it was quick, but it wasn't good. So my first point for today is we're being tested. Verse 22, verse uh, 2 says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham, and he said to Abraham, Abraham replied, here I am. So we are replying today, here we are, to address the adequate funding for our schools and kids. So the question that must be answered is, does this budget adequately, fi adequately fix the state's outdated school funding formula and offer all our young adults a chance at a public higher education? So today, we are being tested when it comes to the future of our children. We are being tested. Statistically, some facts say that Brockton High has been rated a level one school by the state's educational department meaning the students are learning at some of the top rates in the state. So why are we being tested at a federal level? Why are we being tested at a state level? So one of our ask is stop sacrificing our children. The bird says that then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. So what we have to look at is the one constant in all forms of education reform include the idea that small changes in education will have large social returns. They'll have returns in our health, our wealth, and our well-being. So my last point and final point for today is we need to do better because we can do better. The Bible says that Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son Abraham, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? So where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Our ask is this. We need significant additional funds and a comprehensive update to the Chapter 70, for, 70 formula. So Governor Baker, House of Representatives, today we are declaring that we can do better. Hello, good evening. My name is Jenna Fire. I am a Brockton resident. I am a member of Restoration Community Church. I have a son that attends Brockton Public School, and this is my story. When I enrolled my son in the Brockton Public School, it was challenging. His diagnosis, doctors and therapist recommendations were not taken into account. Therefore, he didn't receive the services that he needed. His first year of school, 
His behavior were present, just not alarming. His second year of school was very difficult. I would get weekly phone calls and reports regarding his behaviors. The last two incidents that occurred was one due to him having a hard time. He ran out of the school building, which means he could have get hit by a car. The other incident was him having a hard time transitioning. He had to be restrained from himself, from hurting himself. It was then and only then he received the services that he needed. But it took incidents in order for my son's cry to be heard. From what I'm seeing now, our kids are on life support. And this funding are the only thing to resuscitate them. So my ask is, are we gonna resuscitate them? Because we're saying our kids are the future. Or are we gonna pull the plugs? Then what future will we have without our children? Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Tom Minicello. I'm on the school committee here in Brockton. Um, more importantly, uh, this is my community where I grew up. I went to elementary school here and middle school not too far. It wasn't middle school then, it was junior high school, but right down the street and then Brockton High. Um, this is an, an, an incredible community. It's always been. Um, Brockton is a uh, diverse community. Um, when I grew up in Brockton, we uh, had so many different ethnicities, and today that tradition and heritage continues on, and we're so fortunate to, to be a part of this community. What are we asking for? All we're asking for is a level playing field that I think everyone in Boston on Beacon Hill, from the governor to the House and the Senate, when you say to them, and we're just looking for fairness. They all nod and they all agree and they say, yes, you make sense, perfect sense. Well, great. The time is now. The time has long passed. You cannot have a community like Brockton and others that are down 200 plus teachers in the last five years and think that that's okay. You cannot have a community in a school system that has let go over 400 support staff and think that that is okay for a school system and a community. What we need in Brockton is simple. Fairness with funding. The legislature talks a good game, but the time is over. We need them to act now. Your students, our students are only in the first grade, the seventh grade, the twelfth grade, once in their lives. If they, if they don't build and get the necessary building blocks of learning in that particular grade. When they move on, they're behind the eight ball. When they move on, years later, they're behind the eight ball. This is a very competitive world. And the Boston legislature and the governor are also proud to say how wonderful education is in Massachusetts. How, oh my goodness, we, we test so great when we compare ourselves to other states. Well, that should be applied to all of the school districts including Brockton, including Lawrence, including Springfield, including Worcester, um, you know, Holyoke, Chicopee. You know, that's what we want for all of our children, and that is the law. We are supposed to have that. We are supposed to have fairness. And the time to act is now. You know, this community serves English language learners like no other community in the state. We have people and students and families from so many different places. And guess what? We welcome them in this community. We always have and we always will. However, the numbers are increasing every single year. And that's okay as long as you give us the appropriate funding so that we can support these communities and these individuals. You know, we're talking about stories well, a few years back, we all remember the earthquake in Haiti. The city of Brockton is a large Haitian community. We received, right after that earthquake, 
over 200 some odd students, the most in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts because of that crisis. We asked, we wrote, we begged the, the state, the federal government for funding to help us bridge that gap because obviously our budgets the baby agrees, exactly. <laughs> Our budgets are already set, but when you have an emergency of some 200 odd students coming in, I think there needs to be something, a mechanism in place that that's an extraordinary circumstance that needs to be addressed. Is there anything unfair about that? I don't think so. Um, with respect to our special ed population, we have a great special ed department and many families come to Brockton because of the different opportunities. Do we turn these families away? Of course not. All we need is adequate funding because I don't need to tell anyone here. The cost of special education is very expensive and it goes up every year. And there's no mechanism in place for any of the providers out there to say, oh, we can only go up um, what your budget increase is. So if the Brockton Public Schools gets an increase, let's say of 0.75% from the state, and the provider is going to go up 4%, don't you think we have a problem? Guess what? We have a problem. And that's why every year Brockton for the last five to six years has had what I call a regressive budget, meaning that what we have this year, we can't even afford to continue on for next year. Um, and the state needs to address that. Health insurance. Health insurance goes up considerably the state doesn't address it. So, of course, what we have to pay is much more of an increase than what we receive for funding. So what does that mean? That means to pay those bills, we have to eliminate. We eliminate staff, we eliminate supplies, we eliminate technology, we lim eliminate textbooks, like as was mentioned. And what's more important, in my opinion, is opportunities for children. The younger you get children, engaged, meaning, you know, with activities, after school activities, um, especially our, at our middle school level, where that's sort of the crossroads for many of our children, the direction that they're going to go in. Um, you need after school programs to engage these kids in positive and productive activities. Those are the first things that have to go. Is that fair and right? I don't think so. Would you rather invest in the penal system. I don't want to invest in the penal system. I want to invest in the education system. We're building a society and that's what we want. So I'm, I'm so glad my friends here at BIC invited me this evening. I certainly will speak anytime they want me to speak on this issue, but um, you know, the time is now. We cannot wait any longer. Um, the legislature cannot just wait and, uh, and, and stiff arm this community and other like kind communities and, and not give us any uh, opportunity to say, you know, when a deadline is gonna take place and when we can see the increases that this community and others deserve. So um, thank you for inviting me. And um, I, I, I'm glad that we're all here fighting for the same uh, issue, which is important. It's, it's our kids' education. We all, we, all, we all need to advocate for our children. My name is Michaela Latour. I'm a Brockton resident, a member of Restoration Community Church, and a prophetic leader with Brockton Interfaith Community. I'm a public school educator, a wife, and a mother. My oldest daughter attends Brockton Public Schools and will be entering middle school in September. The state keeps telling us these funding issues take time. They've been taking time for years. They've been taking time since 2015 when the Foundation Budget Review Commission's report was released. They've been taking time all year as the already proposed bills sit idle and the Joint Commission on Education crafts yet another bill that is proposing to address a small fraction of the problem at best. They will continue to take time. And when they finally complete this bill, the state will celebrate what is in truth a colossal shortcoming and an offense to our students, 
our educators, our system, and the future of our society. They have and, can, they have and will continue to take time to do little. And my daughter is out of time. In three years, she will be entering Brockton High School, where students are standing in the back of the classroom because there are not enough seats to accommodate their class size. My child is out of time. Sister Jennifer's child is out of time. Brockton children are all out of time. We can't wait. We won't wait. We know from our research meetings, our relationship building, our conversations with local and state officials, from our deep, deep digging, that what the state finally gives us when they choose to give it to us absolutely will not be close to enough. And we aren't going away until we have everything our children need and deserve. We have written a document outlining what we expect. The Massachusetts State Constitution calls us to cherish the education of our children. Funding our students' education is a constitutional and moral obligation. We expect the state to make certain every student counts, make a long-term investment in the short term, ensure that charter school costs work with and not against local districts and their budgets. Build trust between, to build trust between state and local districts, fostering local control and accountability. Review Chapter 70 formula regularly to make sure it is working. Recognize the need in both Boston and Gateway cities. The Joint Commission on Education has received this document has met with us regarding these expectations and have had time to review. And the information we are receiving continues to reflect not enough, not enough, not enough. We know our state reps and legislators have been working on education for a long time and we are disenchanted with this work. We are disappointed to say the least with the fruits of whatever labor they toiled, taking time and taking time and taking time. So we will continue coming, continue organizing, continue growing, and we are here to tell you, Massachusetts officials, your time is up.